I'm James with Millcove Woodworks, and today I want to show you how to turn your old crib into a crib bench. So a few weeks ago, my wife came to me and told me about an idea that she found on Pinterest where you take your old crib and turn it into a crib bench. So like any good husband, did a little research, figured out kind of what some other people have done to make that conversion and uh, built one for her. So I thought I would take uh, the time to show you guys kind of my approach for this build. And it's a very simple build, it's pretty quick. And the, the kind of short and sweet of it is, you take your side rails and you know, it's gonna vary a little bit depending on what your crib looks like, how it's constructed. Uh, but the idea is take the side rails uh, cut them so that they're not quite as wide. Uh, if you had a bench that was actually this wide, it would be uh, kind of enormous, to be honest with you. So you'll cut the length of these down so that they're a little more narrow, connect those to these, and then I, I simply build a uh, kind of a frame box out of two by four for the seat to sit on. Uh, you mount the box inside the, the shell, if you will, and then throw some 1x6s or 1x4s, whatever you want to do, on top of that 2x4 frame box for your seat. Uh, and that's really about it. Uh, the most time consuming part of this process is the painting. Uh, as you can imagine, with so many little kind of nooks and crannies and tight areas, it can be a little bit of a pain, uh, but I think it's worth it. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started with the build. Like I said, the first thing we're going to do is shorten up these. So let's get going. For the side rails, I'm cutting them down to 17 inches, which with the added width of the headboard will give the bench a total width of just under 20 inches. The first bench I made ended up being about 23 inches wide, which turned out to be more than necessary. The 17 inch width will allow me to use three 1x6s for the seats without having to rip them down to a smaller size, and will also allow for the seat to be set back slightly from the edge of the rails. Cutting the side rails can be tricky depending on how your crib is built. Ideally, I would have liked to use my miter saw for a straighter edge, but for such a short cut, the jigsaw gets the job done. Once both sides are done, I start working on the pocket holes, and I'm going to use these to attach the side rails to the headboard. And I had plenty of room for putting in two screws on the bottom side, but was only able to get one pocket hole into the top of the rail. So I did end up putting another screw in from the back side just to help ensure that the top was secured properly. For placement of where the side rails should be mounted to the headboard, you want to make sure that the legs will be even with the back so that your bench sits level. To do that, I measured from the bottom of each leg to the bottom of the horizontal board. Uh, in this case, the side rail measurement was five and a quarter inches and the headboard was five inches. So I simply measured five and a quarter inches up from the bottom of the headboard leg and then made sure that my side rails met up with that mark. I then used a scrap piece of wood to help determine how far from the edge the side rail should be mounted. But once that's done, I clamp the rail to the headboard along with a square to help keep everything, well, square. Uh, once the seat box is installed, it will help kind of bring everything together, but it's best to get this as close to perfect uh, that first time around because you're only going to have a little bit of wiggle room once the rails are screwed in. With both sides complete, the frame is now done, and I can start working on the 2x4 box for the seat. I take the inside measurement first, which in this case was 52 inches, and for the depth, I went with 16 and 3 quarter inches so that it would sit back a quarter of an inch from the outside edge of the side rails. I then move on to the miter saw where I cut down two pieces of 2x4 to the 52 inch length and then four pieces at 13 and 3 quarter inches. 
Um, they're going to sit inside those wider boards, which will give me that total 16 and 3 quarter inch width that I'm looking for. Once I've laid everything out to make sure it looks okay, I move over to the table saw. And anytime I'm working with construction grade lumber like this, I like to trim the edges just enough to get rid of that rounded corner. Uh, you don't have to do this step in the process, but I personally think it looks a lot cleaner with the squared edges. With the edges trimmed down, I can go ahead and start screwing together the seat frame. Uh, since the piece is going to be painted, I don't go overboard with pocket holes and some attempt to hide the screws because uh, when this is done, I can just fill the screw holes with wood putty. The final cut that we need to make is for the 1x6 boards that are going to be our actual seating surface on top of this box that we've built. Um, I cut these down to a matching 52 inches and that way they'll sit flush with the edge of that seat frame. I then do a test fit just to make sure that my cuts are accurate and to confirm that I don't need to rip down the 1x6s. Alright, so now our cuts are made. Hopefully you're starting to kind of see how this is going to come together. Uh, but my recommendation would be before you install the uh, actual seat, the 2x4 box and the actual 1x6s, stop, take a pause, and paint uh, everything before you get that installed because otherwise you're going to be stuck with these tiny little nooks and crannies especially on the insides of these slats where painting is next to impossible believe me I learned that lesson the hard way on the first crib that I built or crib bench so I'm going to pause uh, do a little bit of cleanup filling in the um, pocket hole screws and any other areas that I think need to be kind of touched up with some wood filler uh, get it painted and then once that's done I'll go ahead and install the seat and you do run the risk of maybe scuffing up the paint um, during the installation of that seat but I assure you uh, any kind of um, repairs that are necessary from that are going to be a lot easier and uh, less time intensive than uh, having to paint the same once it's assembled. With the magic of video editing painting is now done and we can move on to the last step in the process which is installing our seat inside the crib frame. So let's go ahead and get that done. For the seat, I wanted the height from the floor to be about 17 inches. The box is about three inches in height, and then you add the three quarter inch for the one by sixes. So I measure up 13 and a quarter inches from the floor and put a piece of painter's tape to mark that spot on each of the legs. I then put clamps in place at each of those marks and that way I'll have a place to set the seat frame on uh, while I'm attaching it to the actual legs. I then pre-drill for my screws and start attaching at each of the corners. For the front of the box I didn't have a clean way to attach it from the inside so I had to come in from the outside, but again, this piece is going to be painted, so I can come back later, fill those holes with wood filler, and then touch up the paint, and that'll give it a nice clean look. Now that the box is attached, I can do one more test fit for the 1x6 boards, just to make sure everything looks the way I think it should. And once I'm happy with that placement, I can go ahead and attach those boards using my nail gun with one and a half inch nails. All right, and just like that, our crib bench is done. Uh, I do have a couple of holes to uh, fill in and touch up the paint there. Uh, I didn't nick up the paint a little bit right here, but like I said before, um, doing the assembly after it's painted, you're probably going to end up with a couple of touch up areas, but. It's still a lot easier than painting the same once it's assembled. So anyway, uh, that's the crib bench build. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please let me know. Oh, and also, for anyone out there who has experience with spray guns, if you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear them. Um, I tried a Wagner Flexio 3000 a couple weeks ago and was really disappointed. 
So ended up painting all of this uh, by hand, but uh, still interested in the airless sprayer. So if you have any recommendations, hit me up. Uh, otherwise, if you enjoyed it, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks, guys.